So welcome to the next module. Following our previous uh, you know lecture where we are talking about that interrelationships between various natural resources and how each natural resources are dependent on other and also that that any compartmental approach for natural resource management will not provide us the anticipated or expected outcomes. So today we will discuss about the various natural resource management paradigms. So if you look at this uh, resource management is a process of decision making whereby the resources are allocated over space and time and it depends on the aspiration requirement of people. Resource management in terms of environment it can also be defined as the management and interaction and impact of human societies on the environment because most of the natural resources which are utilized by us it is for our life survival livelihood generation maintaining lifestyle so it is important and it's kind of a responsibility on us to manage these resources in an optimum manner with minimum effect on our environment. Natural resource management or NRM, it actually refers to sustainable utilization of major natural resources such as air, water, land, forest, mineral resources, so and so forth, biodiversity, flora, fauna around us. Each one of these has a role to play in our life. Now, it's on our duty and also for our own interest to manage these resources in a sustainable manner. Now NRM, it focuses on scientific and also technical understanding of the life supporting capacity of these natural resources and how these resources can be or should be managed for the benefit of us because it's we, the mankind, are actually utilizing these resources for our own benefit for our own well-being. Now, if you look at NRM, natural resource management, if it is done in an appropriate manner, then basically it leads to your sustainable livelihood. Now, how you can actually achieve sustainable livelihood? What are the different way of natural resource management that we should actually follow to achieve a sustainable livelihood? Natural heritage management. A very important aspect of NRM. Biodiversity conservation. Over the last couple of classes, we have already discussed that how important biodiversity is for our own survival. Land use planning, proper land use planning, like where you would have agriculture and in which land you should have forest, in which land you should have for some other development activities. So land use activities, these are you know important but it requires good planning, good planning so that you can maximize the utilization of natural resources without harming its base or regenerative capacity. Number four, water management. Number five, ecotourism. Six, laws and policy. Because we need helpful laws and policies which allow us to protect, preserve, conserve, these resources which are the very basis of our you know survival. So these are the different you know approaches within natural resource management that would allow you to actually achieve sustainable livelihood. Now let us you know see few key concept or important concept with regard to resource management. First resource allocation very important where and how much resources should be allocated. That is a very, very important factor for resource management. Now, this resource allocation can be temporal or spatial over a period of time or over space, how much area or how long. So this, you know, temporal and spatial pattern of resource uses actually reflect the goal and the priorities and aspiration of a particular community or particular region or country. So in resource allocation, we should focus on the production, consumption, 
and also the distribution of resources and we must consider the local, the regional and the national development objectives because without that you cannot have a proper resource allocation policy. Second, resource development. Now, it is actually the exploitation or you can say the use of resources in the process of development. It involves putting a value on the natural resources so that a neutral thing becomes a resource. As an example, suppose forest. Forest also has a value. Every forest product has a value. In fact, soil, water, any natural resources, you say it has a economic, ecological value. So, if we put those, if we attach somehow these values with natural resources, then the resource development process become much more efficient. Third, resource management, which actually we are dealing in this course. It involves about the amount, quality, timing, availability, how much, where, when. So, all these aspects actually comes under resource management. It one side, it promotes the utilization or exploitation of these resources, but on the other side, it also encourages restoration of resources because it is for the benefit, for, for the, our own well-being. If we have good resource management, then only we can use you know, in the future. So, our own existence depends on a proper resource management policy or system. Next, resource conservation. Very, very important and it is the most important aspect of, of NRM. You can say that how you can actually conserve the resources that provide us the maximum benefit. But at the same time, we also need to think that those very resources must be available for our future generation as well. So, conservation has an important role to play. It not only allow us to utilize at present a certain natural resource, but also it ensures that that particular natural resource is also available for the upcoming generation. So, that is the very foundation of sustainable natural resource management. Now, I will talk about you know few paradigm of natural resource management. If you look at natural resource management are basically working on five paradigms, different paradigms and each one of them are very, very, you know, having very different philosophy behind that. Now, starting from frontier economics, then you have deep ecology, environment protection, number four resource management and then you have eco development. And if you look at these, you know, five paradigms, each one of them having some common, but they could be very different from each other. Now, I will discuss about each one of them and the differences among these paradigms. Then it is up to you to choose that which one is appropriate for natural resource management at this context. So, this is lot of texts are here. So, I am not going to just uh, discuss it in this manner. We will move to the next slide, but yes, there are lot of differences also among each one of these five natural resource management paradigms. When we discuss each one of them individually, you will automatically get then how they are different from each other. Let us start with frontier economics. From the name itself, we can understand that it means business. In case of frontier economics, technology is the main driver of this paradigm and technology is being used for the benefit of mankind to the maximum possible way utilizing the natural resources. And in this paradigm, the natural resources are considered as free gift from the nature. So, that means you take out as much as possible. So, according to this paradigm, sustainability is not an important factor. The important factor is money. So, it largely relies on technological optimism and also it says that technology is progressive and can treat any challenge it creates. So, very kind of economy or financial or profit mind philosophy. 
without any care of the resources available whether it will be there in future or not. No, it just care if it is there use it. So, next you come to deep ecology exactly opposite of frontier economics. This paradigm puts man under nature. So, it put nature on top and man quite logically below nature. So, that means in this paradigm nature has been given more importance. So, it says that reduction in population or promotion of cultural and biological diversity activities are actually important. So, that means in this concept it promotes conservation, it promotes also to take care of nature. It also favors the use of simple and crude frugal technologies. It does not try to maximize the technological advancement for the extraction or exploitation of natural resources. It says that use some simple crude technology which will not impact environment negatively, but at the same time you can utilize the resource for your, your benefit. So, in deep ecology overall in one line it can be summarized that it believes in the principle of 3 R reduce, reuse and recycle. Next environment protection. Now, environment protection here it from the name itself it clears that this paradigm talks about take care of environment, you use uh, resources, but you also look at the management maintenance or repairment of this environment. It limits some of the harmful activities that could be associated with the production of goods or extracting resources. So, it limits the amount of resources should be utilized. So, it also says that technology can find a way to emulate the ecological functions of nature. So, that means in this paradigm it gives importance for the maintenance of environment. It also gives some limits that up to this you can utilize resources in this manner. So, some amount of restrictions are there. Then the next paradigm comes resource management. This paradigm or this approach advocates wise use of natural resources through some regulation of human behavior and activities. Very, very matured concept where it relies on the human behavior quite significantly. This also focuses on the manner by which people would like to use or combine the resources to achieve their goals according to their you know interest, according to their planning whether it is in individual level or in community level. So, resource management is not stopping you to utilize the resources, but it says it expects it, it anticipates that we as a human being will behave wisely and meaningfully will be utilizing the resources that is available in the nature. The last paradigm is eco development. Eco development approach is a preemptive approach. Here the natural resources should be managed in such a way that pollution is prevented even before it occurs, a anticipatory approach. So, that means here it says that okay, you have you are going to utilize a natural resource A, B and C, but you, you have to ensure that for the processes that you are going to use these resources A, B and C it must not lead to environment pollution. It must not lead to contaminate any other natural resources. So, that means it helps to restructure the relationship between us society and nature. Again very matured concept. So, it also allows to develop a perfect relationship between man and nature or society and nature. And this approach may or may not involve integration of all other paradigm, all other four paradigm. It might involve or it may not involve. So, eco development approach as you see here that it looks like a very balanced, a very matured approach and it also has the scope of taking other four paradigm into, into it 
or it may not. So, that means it depends according to the situation it can go individually or it can take the other four into it. Now, if you look at uh, the evolution of this resource management paradigms, it is very interesting. Three time zone if we consider resource management pre-industrial or pre-colonial period, during colonial period and after colonial period. I am talking about here in the context of India. Lot of differences you will find in the approach, in the ideology. So, it totally you know different from one to the other period. And that is why India as a country has gone through quite a lot of experiments during all these different time period. If you look at during the pre-industrial, pre-colonial period, there are very poorly developed technology, no technology itself you can say to exploit resources available in the country. And that is why India was full of resources when British came here. This country was you know you might have studied in history uh, full of natural resources. So, population was less, consumption was low. So, resources were in plenty, unutilized. Economy was very poorly managed. Resource exploitation was not optimum. So, resources were available in excess and that has attracted others to come here, industrial or colonial period. So, technology advancement was definitely seen because when colonial period starts, obviously the invaders came here and found lot of resources there and majority of them are unutilized. So, definitely they brought in some technologies for their own benefit and they started utilizing those technologies for utilizing or exploiting the resources available in plenty. Resources were both relatively and absolutely abundant on that period and when this you know industrial period starts, utilization of resources gone up. So, you see also a population increase. Resource exploitation was mainly focused during that period of time on mineral resources, coal, gold, petroleum, you name it. And one thing was very clear in that period of time, most of the resources that has been utilized during colonial period, it was done with a western perspectives without considering local environment. So, resource management took a setback. So, the concern with environment was less, interest was there more to utilize the resources for the economic benefit. So, the private gains were more than the public good. So, the resource management policies during this period of time focus largely on the protection of few public domains such as you know national parks, games, national reserves, forest reserves or some others which is purely from the viewpoint of recreations. Third period is the period that we are going through now, post industrial and post colonial period. At that period of time it was realized that resource exploitation need to be sustainable. So, the concept of sustainability came into picture, environment concerns across the developing nations went very very high. There was also a fear of you know fast population growth, reducing in agricultural productivity, reducing in natural resource availability, soil erosion, unemployment, poverty. So, all challenges started bothering. So, a very very smart strong resource management policy or strategy was the call for the day. So, forgetting private or individual games the time came to think about public good. Public participation started playing a important role in resource management post colonial period because people felt it that the time has come if we as a community do not try to address the resource natural resource management aspect we are not going to survive for long term. So, it was important that public participation in a very multidisciplinary nature. So, sustainable development was greatly focused for protection and enhancement of environment. Concept of common property, common property right on resources also came into picture. Investment in education and industry was significantly increased. So, overall you see a very matured policy and governance came into picture the post colonial period to take care of these resources whichever, whichever is remaining there 
and utilize them in a best possible way. So you see a very clear cut change in these three time period, pre-colonial, colonial and post-colonial period. It is very, very important for all of us to understand this history of na natural resource management, how it actually changed over period of time. Mm -hmm.